Welcome to week three tutorial on quantum mechanics. This week has a special focus on the harmonic oscillator in one dimension. The hallmark of this system is a quadratic potential around the position of equilibrium, which here I have set at x equal to zero. This is quite analog to the massless spring in classical mechanics, with a mass attached to its end that fills a force that is proportional but opposite sign to its displacement. Here, in this classical example, the position and momentum simply follows a sinusoidal function. But what is it that is different in quantum mechanics? From a quantum perspective, are we going to see the same? So let's get to the first exercise. Let's remember that Px has a very specific form in the momentum represent in the in the position representation. So the first part of this exercise. We are given an, an operator A, also known as the annihil annihilation operator or the structure operator. And we are asked to compute the conjugate of this object, which, which is quite simple. If you remember that both X and PX are Hermitian operators, and as such, they coincide with themselves. For this reason, when we compute the conjugate of this expression, the only thing that changes sense is the imaginary component I in front of the second term. The second part of this exercise consists of computing the commutator of A and A dagger. This is a more algebraic exercise. The only thing that we have to do is to insert A and A dagger into the commutator of this expression above. And um, yeah, here we have two types of expressions. The first type of expression is commutators that um, involve same quantities in both entries. They are going to be zero, obviously, because x, x minus x, x is zero, or px, px minus px, px is zero. So the only terms that actually contribute to the final expression are the cross product terms. Perhaps we can obtain an expression that simply depends on the commutator between x and px. And as we saw last week, this is simply i x bar. So it is important for you, you bear in mind this result. Why? Because it will appear in, in, in future exercises. So bear in mind the fact that a, a dagger equals a dagger a plus one. So finally, we are asked to prove that the number operators give real eigenvalues. And again, this is rather trivial if you remember two things. First, only Hermitian operators give real quantities because, well, only real numbers coincide with themselves. And second, the Hermitian conjugate of a product of two operators is the product of the conjugate of these operators, but with the orders interchanged. So you if, you, if you bear in mind these two things, these two little points, it is rather trivial. It's just the answer writes itself. So easy, easy enough. Let's look at the following exercise. This exercise, as you see here, will require us to sharpen our aragonite sense here, our literal intuition, it says. But no maths is required, so that's good. In the first part, we are asked to sketch the first eigenvectors of the harmonic oscillator. So you can sketch them, or if you go to the Wikipedia and just copy and paste, you have something like this. So behold the cornucopia of wave functions we have at our disposal. The important thing to remember here is that there are some general features that we have to realize. You need to pay, you know, pay attention to the first one being that the energies must be equally spaced. And they, uh, this, the, the energy difference between two consecutive states is h bar omega. And obviously the ground state is not h bar omega, but one half h bar omega. The other, the other feature has to do with the parity of these functions. Even functions are symmetric with respect to the origin, while all functions are anti-symmetric. Finally, notice that each eigenstate has the same energy, sorry, has, has the same number of nodes as the order they occupy. 
Let's remember, node is uh, equal to the, num the, the point at which a function is equal to zero. Okay, in the second part, we have a slightly different system. On the positive side, we have a exactly identical harmonic oscillator, but on the negative side, we have infinity everywhere. So if you have a wave function, and if you are a wave function, and you want to comply with the boundary conditions, you need to vanish when the potential is infinite. That's how it is. This rules out all possible even uh, number, even quant, sorry, all, all possible even quantum states. You need to vanish because you need to vanish when the potential is infinite. Again. Also, you may notice that the distance between any two consecutive states now, because one function is missing, is twice as big, and it makes sense that all energies overall have shifted up in energy because the potential now is much bigger. So energies are higher. Okay. Finally, the last exercise was about playing around with the annihilations and the creation operators, as well as, well, the functional form of eigenvectors. In the first part, it's actually quite reminiscent of the first exercise, isn't it? We need to just plug uh, the expressions for A and A dagger and compute their product, not their commutator, but this time their product. Again, you will have direct products. These ones, which gives something very similar to what we already have in H here. And then you have also cross product terms. And these cross product tests are the ones that are going to generate the commutator. Because we know what the commutator gives as an answer, we can actually compute this. So when we insert a, a dagger into equation one, this minus one half is going to cancel out with the one that has uh, that you have already here in this in the round brackets. And the final expression is going to be just the first two terms, which actually are identical. Okay, now we are asked to compute the A dagger operator on the ground states. There are two ways of doing this. Ah, sorry, the A operator, not the A dagger. So uh, basically, this is done very straightforwardly. And uh, you need to get the two terms cancelled. You, you're going to see that these two terms that appear inside the round brackets are going to cancel each other. We just need to apply the Hamiltonian on the wave function. It's going to give you this expression. Now, we can actually see that if you apply the Hamiltonian on this, the first term is going to give you zero because the, the structure operator is acting on the wave function. So this is going to cancel. Let me see this here. This cancels. And the second term is going to give this half is going to give you the actual eigen energy of the ground states. Okay, simple enough. Now, yes, finally, this is what I was expecting for. We are asked to compute the A dagger operator on the ground states. And here, indeed, there are two ways of doing this. The first way is the way we all know and love with functions. Okay, and this looks rather cumbersome, but it's guaranteed that you will have an answer. So we start with this expression. This time, notice that you have here a minus sign instead of a plus, okay? So we apply these um, operators on the ground states. The ground state is just a Gaussian. And with a little bit of jiggery poggery, you get to the final answer, which is a Gaussian multiplied by the first Hermit or Hamiltonian, which is this 2x. Now we're we're not done. We're not out of the woods just yet. We are we have this expression which we can actually compare with the ones that we find in the literature and say, okay, we understand the problem. We have in particular, we started from this particular expression, we apply a dagger and we get this expression. So far, so good. We are not done. 
we now have to calculate this. And we will obtain something that is proportional to a to psi one. And the constant of proportionality is going to be precisely the energy, which we are asked to find. So I'm going to leave this as an um, exercise for the reader. Okay. And I'm going to proceed for, with the with a second way of doing this. Because there's an alternative way of doing this, in my opinion, which in my opinion is much, much faster. So we take our Hamiltonian and apply. On, uh, apply to on to the first excited state. And we see here that we have um, a dagger, a, a dagger. Remember what I said before? This expression is very ha handy here. It's very useful here because it allows us to invert the first, uh, the, the, this expression here. And we know how it, uh, it acts, this first operator on side, side zero. It actually cancels. So in doing so, we get something that looks like this. Now we pull out the A dagger and we obtain this, from which we can neatly read the eigenenergy of the system, of the first excited state. Okay, at this stage, some of you might be thinking, hmm, why should I learn this new algebra with these all near A and A dagger operators? No, I have to confess, I was one of those students back then. You know, uh, it's weird. It's, it looks like necessary math added to the problem. I normally like to see a function and how it's, uh, well, in my, in, back in my days, I actually have a lot of spare time to compute expectation values, those integrals with those uh, wave functions until I saw the actual expression for n equal to 100, which is a beast, to say the least. So obviously, working with these functions is terrible. Working with this algebra, so the price, the price you have to pay just to learn of the rules, but working with this algebra is extremely handy. And I've realized that there are certain problems that are impossible to solve if you use, uh, if you take the first approach. So, yeah, if you ask me, if you ask me what I prefer now, this is what I say. Stay tuned, and we'll have more quantum mechanics next week.